Looking up at the sky, searching for love. Dear Muslims, I know, I know, when you see the title of this video, you may be thinking, come on, Sabeel, flying as a Muslim is risky enough. Doing dawah on the plane, don't put us into trouble. Come on, we have enough troubles. But my dear Muslims, here is the point. If dawah can be done on the plane, it can be done anywhere else. Yes. So here are of the hundreds of encounters which I had in the plane, yes, here are the top five that I could recall. Two days ago, I was flying from California back to Chicago. Sitting next to a person, she was young, earphones were on and her eyes were closed and it was a very next to impossible situation. Alhamdulillah, did the word to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make it possible, open the door so I could convey the message of Islam to this young lady, to this young sister. Alhamdulillah. After she woke up, after the earphones were out, Alhamdulillah, I asked her this question, are you heading home? Means are you, is Chicago your home? She said no, she's heading from Chicago to Michigan and she's going back to school. Asked her the question, so what's your major? She said, sociology and counseling. Alhamdulillah, when I asked her that, she asked me the question, that where are you heading and what do you do? Then I responded to her, I help people find peace and purpose in life. That's all I said and she became very curious, how do you do that? That's my dawa pickup line by the way. It works wonders especially in the plains especially with the strangers I didn't say anything about Islam anything about spirituality anything else about imposing my faith on her I help people find peace and purpose in life she became curious long story short she wanted to know how I do that Alhamdulillah I mentioned that using God's guidance that was coming down from the time of Adam and Moses and Jesus and Abraham and Muhammad, peace be upon all of them. After 45 minutes of conversation, she, she said, how can I get a copy of the Quran? I mentioned to her, go to gainpeace.com. Number two, she said, can I come to a mosque to learn more about Islam? And I mentioned yes. Number four, flying from Houston back to Chicago after one of the conventions, I was a little bit scared in the plane because the weather was kind of very harsh out there. The weather was, you know, turbulence was going on in the plane. And I was a little bit, you know, praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the safety. And I wanted to speak with someone because I was a little bit scared. I don't want to just have these negative thoughts. So I forced myself to speak to the person who was sitting next to me. Again asked him the question, so where are you heading? Is Chicago your final destination? He said, no, he from Chicago, he's heading to Kansas City. I said, good, wonderful. I asked him one more question after building the rapport. So what do you do? Then he asked me the question, that what do you do? I help people find peace and purpose in life. That's all I said. His eyes sparkled and then he said, how do you do that? Long story short, Alhamdulillah. In the plane, after being informed about Islam, this brother, who is a businessman in my flight, he proclaimed, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. That there is no other God besides one God, Allah and Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the messenger of Allah. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is the one who guides people. All we need to do is convey the message using hikmah, eloquently explaining Islam building the credibility, the rapport with the person and leave the rest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number three, flying from Chicago to Charlotte. It was Friday morning and as soon as I land, I was supposed to go to the masjid to deliver the Jummah khutbah. So I was mentally preparing, going over in my head some of the points that I should be conveying in the Jummah khutbah. But the sitting next to me was Jason and I knew that yes, this could be my only chance and this could be the only time that Jason would be sitting next to a Muslim. I started to ask the same question to the person, you know, Jason, where are you heading? Is this your final destination? And Jason said, yes, 
Then I mentioned to him, Jason, right after I land, I am going to deliver the Friday sermon and I am going to invite you. Jason, can you come? Jason said yes. You know, after he lands, he has some time. Long story short, my dear Muslims, as I stood up for the Juma Khutbah, as I was looking at the crowd, as people are coming in, I saw Jason walking in. Alhamdulillah, I was overjoyed. He sat down and he listened to the whole khutbah, Alhamdulillah. And after the khutbah, after the prayer, I approached Jason. And Jason said, I loved the Friday sermon that you gave your speech. I am motivated by your cause. And he took out, he put his hand into the pocket and he took out cash. And he said, you know, Sabil, the wonderful work that you, you Muslims are doing to combat Islamophobia and to build the bridges. Here is some donation for your cause. Use it. And then he texted me about two months after that encounter. And he said that I am now a peace activist. And he had a big sign, by the way. He was on the road in a public place. A big sign behind him was White House. Number two. As I was flying from South America back to Chicago, my stop was supposed to be in Miami. It was a late flight. And lo and behold, I found out that announcement in the airport was that the flight is going to be delayed. The flight from South America to Miami would be delayed and that means I have to stay that night in Miami. And I was a little bit you know, frustrated, come on, spending the whole night, I could be with my family in Chicago, I could be doing some work, dawa work, but stuck in Miami, come on, I was not too happy. Alhamdulillah, this is the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When I took the next morning flight, lo and behold, I was sitting on the aisle seat, and next to me were a couple. Alhamdulillah, build a rapport, ask them the same question again. Where are you heading and what do you guys do? They asked me the same question. I said, I help people find peace and purpose in life. They started to get excited. How do you do it? Then I explained to them God's guidance. How it could help you. How it could help humanity find the solutions for the problems that we are going through. Alhamdulillah. Long story short. In the plane, before we landed, the husband and the wife. Both of them, they embraced Islam. They both embraced Islam. They said, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah in the plane. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala works when wonders. We are just vehicles. The help, the guidance comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number one. The most memorable encounter which I had, my dear Muslims, was when I was flying from Chicago again to Charlotte. The night before, I had little sleep. So I was thinking that, you know, maybe in the plane, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make it, make it possible that there is no one sitting next to me, so I could take a nap. I could take some rest, so I could be refreshed. When I went inside, as I was walking, as I was walking, I found out that my seat was right in the middle, surrounded by the military personnel. I said, you know, forget about sleep, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has some other plan for me. Ask them this question, that where are you guys headed? They said they are heading towards Dallas eventually. Then they asked them the question, have you ever been to Chicago? Because I told them that in Chicago, in the north side, there is a naval base, there is a, there is a army base. That I, I go there to give Friday sermons. I go there to give spiritual counseling and spiritual education. They became interested, you know, what kind of counseling, what education that you give them. That's when I mentioned to them about Islam, God's guidance, God's solutions for humanity. So when they became interested, that's when I pulled out from my laptop bag two books. One book I gave it to the guy on the right and the girl on the right. Alhamdulillah, they took out their earphones and they started to read those two books. But here is the beauty by the way. As I was conversing with them, I mean obviously using hikmah, right? The people around me, they were listening. Alhamdulillah, they were listening. They were listening to what I was saying. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also guide them. 
so my dear muslims the whole point of this video is to motivate myself first and foremost and to motivate you that dawa is easy the shortcomings are from ourselves the barriers that we place between ourselves and conveying the message are the barriers are our psychological barriers so i pray to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he creates the opportunities for us so we can convey the message fulfill the obligations and alhamdulillah invite humanity to the creator worshiping him alone and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us protect us when we are on the plains protect us when we are on the streets in our homes unite the muslim ummah so we can become peace ambassadors of islam not just to the people of the western countries but to all of humanity with that jazakallahu khairan keep on doing dawa dawa is easy just do it